Good morning and welcome to our daily Lenten devotional, continuing to read from our book, The Road to Emmaus, on Saturday, Holy Saturday, Waiting with Christ's Lovers. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger, and of Jose and, of Jose and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee, and there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate, wondering if he had already if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph brought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 15, verses 40 to 47. Julian linked the first gift she asked from God, experience of Christ's passion, to the women who watched Jesus suffer and die. She explains, As for the first, although I believed already ha I had some feeling for Christ's passion, yet I desired more by the grace of God. I thought at that time to be like Mary Magdalene and the others who were Christ's lovers, and therefore I desired a bodily sight, wherein I might have more knowledge of the bodily pains of our Savior, and of the compassion of our Lady, and all his true lovers, that saw his pains in that time, for I would be one with them and suffer with him. She is honest enough to admit that when this prayer was being fulfilled, she had moments of regret. When she describes the drying of Christ's body, which in the longer text she does with what one modern translator describes as vivid, almost intrusive realism, she writes, To see all these many pains of Christ filled me with full of pain, until I thought to myself, little did I realize what pain it was I asked for, and like a wretch I regretted it, thinking to myself if only I had known what it were like I would never have prayed for it. She does not draw back, however, and is rewarded with a new level of understanding of the cost of loving. She sees Mary, the mother of Christ, as a supreme example of this. For Christ and she were so united in love that the greatness of his loving was to cause her very great pain. For however much higher, mightier, sweeter the love is, the more sorrow it is to the lover to see the body they love in pain. All his disciples, all his true lovers, suffered pains more than their own body's death. Many of us will be able to remember examples from our own experience, the pain of watching someone whom we love suffer, and being helpful, helpless rather, to alleviate that suffering. It is particularly sharp. Parents seeing a child suffer, or husbands and wives seeing the other in pain, will often say, I wish I could suffer for them. So it is, Julian says, with Christ and humankind. And in this I saw a great oneing between Christ and ourselves. I knew it to be so, for when he was in pain, we were in pain. The compassion, this suffering with the others, is of course reciprocated by Christ. At the end of her vivid visions of the crucifixion, Julian thought that Christ had died. But then she saw his face change, his countenance became joyous, and heard him ask, Are you pleased I suffered for you? She replied, Yes, dear Lord, in your mercy. Yes, good Lord, bless you always. The conversation continued with Jesus replying, If you are pleased, then I too am pleased. This is my joy, my bliss, my endless liking that I was ever able to suffer for you. For truly I could have suffered more. I would have suffered more. Although the pain that Julian saw and experienced as she stood by the cross of Christ with all his true lovers was real, the love that brought Jesus to that cross was more real. The love and the suffering are not separate, but love overcomes suffering because it is more deeply rooted in the nature of what God has created. 
for the pain was a deed done in time by the working of love. But his love was without beginning, and is, and ever shall be, without any end. Let us pray. Crucified Savior, as I remember what you suffered for me, fill my heart with compassion for the sufferings of the world that you died to redeem. Keep me always in the assurance that love is stronger than pain and death, even when all my hope lies in the tomb. Amen.